of you would prefer to watch eight hours of NBC's run up to the Kentucky Derby. Uh, but if you hold off on the mint juleps for a few minutes, um, we'll get through some really cool stuff. So bear with me. Um, my my presentation is going to be a, a, a little bit of a shift, perhaps, from what you've been listening to this morning and this afternoon so far, in that I'm going into the world of fundamental analysis. I know most of you are probably uh, technical traders, technical or you TA experts, if you will, uh, and that's largely what you've been looking at and listening to. But if you'll allow me uh, a little bit of your time and your ear, I want to show you something that we've been using for the last 18 months and the way that we're using it, it is a fundamental analysis tactic and it works. And it's actually really simple to do, to use. So let's uh, dive right in. I'm uh, not going to, I'm going to try to uh, move again, try to make up a little bit of time since we're running late here. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, obviously Forex future stock and options trading is not appropriate for everyone. There is a substantial risk of loss associated with trading these markets. Losses can and will occur. No system or methodology we all know has ever been developed that can guarantee profits or ensure freedom from losses. And no representation or implication is being made that basically you're going to make any money is what it always comes down to. So uh, making the lawyers happy here that uh, obviously with this methodology, with everything I'm uh, sharing with you here today, uh, it's all uh, it is all uh, theoretical in this presentation, but we have been doing it in the real world with real investors for the last year and a half. Um, in fact, I got a letter yesterday from one of uh, one of our members, um, just a, in just a couple of months, making some minor tweaks to her portfolio. Uh, she was up over 12 percent, so we were very happy in her IRA. So we were very happy to see that. So I want to get uh, to the basic premise. Uh, what we've put together is a step-by-step -step investing plan, specifically designed to create a million-dollar portfolio. I'm going to teach you the basis of that plan. I'm going to teach you specific investing rules that we use inside of that plan. And then I'm going to show you the fundamental analysis tactic we use to identify the right stocks to apply those rule to, rules to inside of our plan. And when we get down uh, to it, this is what I'm going to be teaching you over the next 40 to 45 minutes. Um, it is a unique investing plan. We do go uh, a little bit uh, out of the world here to say that in the next uh, eight, six to eight years, depending on what your starting capital could be, uh, it is a plan that can turn $10,000 into a million dollars. We like to say it's faster than most people pay off a car loan. It's also what you're going to learn is a simple rules-based strategy that automatically secures investing gains and prevents portfolio wrecking losses. I'm going to teach you the one number that you must know to find the best stocks to own and to avoid. And I'm also going to put all of this together in a powerful yet very safe strategy to grow your portfolio by showing you how we compound our gains on a monthly basis instead of an annual basis. And I will be clear that our presentation is not about high-risk investing, although you, it may seem like it, it isn't. Uh, we do not deal in penny stocks. We are not day traders. Uh, this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. This is not Forex trading or real estate speculation. I am uh, focused on the stock market. I will be talking about investing in stocks. Again, slightly different way, slightly different approach. Uh, and I know uh, from talking to investors on our side of the, of the publishing world, uh, many folks are really worried right now, really nervous about putting their money in the stock markets. Obviously, the, the, the S&P, although range-bound for much of this year, and a fairly wide range it is, at, at, uh, at almost 5%, um, folks are worried. You know, it's like every time they want to jump in, the market's at a high, so they want to wait, the market comes back, and then all of a sudden, what does it do? It reverses, and boom, two days later, you've got another new high. So it's making it, I think, challenging for many investors to approach how to build a portfolio again. And even if you are, a, you are a day trader, you sort of have your day trading account, one of the things to always consider is to have that backup, if you will. Uh, in other words, that investing account that doesn't take your time, it allows you to focus on the things that you're doing in your day trading account, but has the ability to grow and maybe takes 30 to 40 minutes a week to manage at best. So uh, for those of you who are more day trading oriented, uh, let me carry you along in our presentation today as well. I don't want to 
leave anybody out. So when you put all of these things together, one of the things you're going to discover is you don't have to worry about the market rising or falling because you'll have a strategy that can profit in any market condition. You'll also see and won't worry about bear markets or huge losses because your portfolio is protected. And you'll see as I go through the plan and the rules how all of that works together, money management, risk management, uh, and portfolio management. They all work cooperatively in what I'm going to teach you today. And you also won't worry about buying the top because when you utilize the one number strategy here, this ensures that you're buying the right stocks. So uh, one of the points that I want to start with, however, is when I talk about building a million dollar portfolio, it's important to understand briefly the basis for that number. It's not arbitrary. Uh, it is, there's actually a very damn good reason to have a minimum of a million dollars, and that's retirement. And the truth for most people is they don't, they're nowhere even close, they're not even close to that. Uh, the average portfolio value right now is, is less than $50,000 in America. 65% of Americans, $50,000 or less save for retirement. And this is one of the reasons why Forbes magazine uh, just two years ago called this the greatest retirement crisis in American history. Because over the next five to ten years, that that crisis, if you will, this, this lack of money for those who are older investors, those who are senior citizens even now, um, and baby boomers who are approaching retirement is going to come to a head. And to put this in the context of sort of like living style or lifestyle, if you will, consider that the average household income in the U.S. is just over $52,000 per year. The average person retires at 67 and lives another 15 years. So just to maintain an average standard of living, you'd need at least $780,000. That's $780,000 just for retirement. If you're a younger investor, it doesn't account for things like buying a home, putting kids through college. If you're an older investor, it doesn't account for the, the future medical expenses that you can expect. The AARP recently estimated that senior citizens will need a minimum of $240,000 during retirement for future medical expenses. That's over and above Medicare, Medicaid, Obamacare, any other health care plan. Uh, so those are some staggering numbers. But when you add it all up, you can see why we've put together a plan that's designed to build a portfolio that's up to a million dollars. But there's a problem. And that problem is we don't have any safe, low-risk choices. Uh, the Federal Reserve has been very good at removing those options from us. And by safe, I'm talking about bonds, savings accounts, annuities, CDs, all of the, the, the ways that we used to segment off part of our portfolio uh, where you could get 3 to 7% per year, sometimes maybe 8 or 9% per year. Uh, now all of those have collapsed far worse than the stock market did. Frankly, the stock market recovered, right? We've seen that. Uh, the, the current current yields on bonds, on U.S. Treasuries, half what they were five years ago. Uh, if you try to put $100,000 in a CD, and I don't know why you would, you're better off putting it under a mattress because interest rates are 87% lower than they were before the financial crisis of 2008-2009. Now, I know everybody's going to talk about 2008-2009. It's time to get past that collapse. It's time to move past that. And... Let's look at how the stock market is working today, because it's different today than it was five years ago. First and foremost, and I don't have this on the slide, so just bear, bear with me while I put this out for you, uh, or while I explain this for you, over 50% of the stocks on the S&P 500 are trending either much higher or much lower than the S&P 500 index itself. This is a market divergence. Uh, it's, a, it's the widest divergence in individual stocks compared to the index in the last 35 years. This is a good thing for investors and traders in stocks. It means that you, have, you, you are not tied to, so to speak, the, the overall index. Uh, you have more profit opportunity. You also have to protect yourself because there's more loss, loss opportunity. And in part, that's because the stock market is moving more, much more rapidly than it did even five or ten years ago. And if we think about high-frequency trading, computer-based trading, computer program trading, um, all of these things are, are operating at the, at the speed of light now. 
I, you could say the speed of internet, but the speed of light. And that means that the, you have to make some changes in the way you approach your stocks. I'm not going to tell you that buy and hold is dead because buy and hold is not dead. I will tell you that buy and hold is maybe one to two years instead of five to 10 years. And the reason for that is because the, the, the big institutions, the big traders, they're looking for companies that have the potential to grow, grow profits, grow revenue. Uh, many of these things are, you know, we, we all know them, but now I'm going to start working into how do you can actually tap into some of these things. And very briefly, just, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of background on myself. My name is John Hutchinson. I am the Millionaire Blueprints creator. I built this strategy along with my partner, Jamie DeLugash. Uh, we have been running this for a little over 18 months as the Millionaire Blueprint program uh, launched in uh, October of 2013. I'm also a published author. My book, The Wealth Shield, How to Invest and Protect Your Money, can be found on Amazon.com. And I'm one of the publishers here at Traders Reserve and Main Street Investor. And frankly, what I do and what I do best is help people get back on the path of restoring their retirement dreams. I, we avoid risky and get rich quick schemes it's not what we're after we're after if you will the the slow steady wins the race even though we are a little more aggressive in how we go about doing that and what i mean by that is if we take a look at how most people structure their portfolio today the one of the big mistakes we continue to see people making is they're structuring their portfolios the exact same way they did 15 years ago and the reality is, and the truth is, that in that time, the average annual return for most investors is less than 3%. And even if you believe all the big forecasts, they might be 7% per year in the future. But the truth is a little bit of math fun for you. At 7% per year, you could put $10,000 into the stock market every single year, and it would take you 30 years to reach a million-dollar goal. That's if you have ten grand to put in every year, and if you get 7% per year. Most people don't have 30 years. This is a chart of an index fund of the S&P 500 over the last uh, 15 years. You could have put $10,000 every single year into an S&P 500 index fund. And your average annualized rate of return was 2.9%. At that rate, it would take you 50 years, still putting 10 grand into the market every year, to get to a million dollar portfolio and this is I mean let's think about this this is what Warren Buffett and and uh, John Bogle and other sort of venerated minds of the investing world are telling you to do put your money in an index fund and it's going to grow at three percent per year because that's what it's been growing at for the last 15 years and the last 15 years are important because the first five of those years include the highest rate of money flows into index funds and mutual funds in the history of the market and most people lost that money so it's time to do something that you stop doing what doesn't work and start doing something that can work something a little different and that's why we say in eight years or less this could be your portfolio this concept is taking ten thousand dollars starting with that amount of money never adding another penny i'll show you how that's possible possible in a minute and building that to a million dollar portfolio in about eight years. Now, the advantage to what I'm teaching you, and now we'll dive into the elements of the plan, it allows you to start small and build rapidly using what we call short-term investing. Now, short-term investing is not day trading, so I'll qualify short-term investing as any investment that we would hold up to 90 days, so up to three months. We also look at medium and long-term inv investments, which are six-month time frames or one-year time frames. So if we're going to buy a stock, we want to start it in our short-term investing. And then we will show you how, with specific profit objectives, we have the ability to take gains or move those investments into longer time frames for larger gains. But for the, for the purposes of brevity here today, I'm going to focus on the short-term investment part of this portfolio here. The advantage to the way that we've structured this plan is it holds fewer stocks. So I told you earlier, whether you're an investor, whether you're a day trader, this does not take hours of time to manage. It's actually very simple. Most of it's almost just following a step-by-step -step strategy easily. And we do set specific profit objectives based on how long we're going to hold that investment. So we'll come to that in the rules section here 
We have specific profit and loss triggers based on our short-term investments, holding them up to 90 days. And the, it, I talked earlier about how this will combine portfolio management, money management, uh, and risk management for you. One of the steps in that, in, in the first step here with this plan, is to use just part of your portfolio. You're not going all in here. You're taking a small part of your portfolio, generally, uh, for larger investors, about 10%. Um, we generally recommend starting with $10,000. You'll see why in a couple of screens here. Uh, but this allows you to essentially keep your portfolio safe. Nothing's going to take down your whole portfolio when you do this by taking off just a little piece of the pie. And this process of the short-term investing, the plan, the rules, everything I'm teaching you here, will automate what we call our hyper-compounding principle. Hyper-compounding is based on this definition that investors should commit to memory. And that is that the key to successfully growing your portfolio is determined by increasing the annualized rate of return on your money. I showed you earlier, 15 years in the S&P 500 index fund, 2.9% per year. This is a linear math example, so bear with it, but understand the power of it. This is hyper-compounding returns. If you start with $10,000 and you get an average return of 4% per month, per month, not per year, after 12 months, you'd have $16,000. That's a total annual return of 60%. Very nice. Here's the hyper part of that. If you follow and continue to follow that strategy for a second year, after 24 months, you'd have $26,650, $658. But look what's happened to your annualized return. It's in, it has increased from 60% to 83% on that original $10,000. And more importantly, you've more than doubled your money, but you haven't added a single penny. This is a way to rethink how you invest your money. The market is moving more, much more rapidly. You have faster trends that develop and die. This is a way for you to capture parts of that trend, enough of that so that you can actually make money, take that money, put it to work again the next month, Compound it, compound it, compound it. This is how people should be growing their portfolios. Unfortunately, most people aren't. So uh, let's dive into the specifics of the plan. I'm going to start uh, quite simply with a basic example of a $10,000 portfolio. You, again, you'll see why as I go through the next couple of steps here. But quite simply, the key here is whatever your starting portfolio is, you don't, you don't have to risk it all. There's absolutely no reason to. We recommend don't start with anything more than 10% of your total portfolio. If you have $100,000 or more, 10% is more than enough to get you the exposure you need to get the rapidly rapid growth. Generally, we want people to start with about $10,000. We have seen people start with as little as $2,500. They do operate under different rules. The next step, and this is part of the risk management of the portfolio, is to divide that capital, that $10,000, into 10 equally weighted capital groups or buckets. Each bucket then would hold one stock at a time. So the maximum number of stocks you're holding in this short-term investing portfolio would be 10. So for example, if we have $10,000, divide that by 10, you have 10 capital groups of $1,000 each. You'd use $1,000 each to buy the, the, the a stock, one stock uh, or ETF or what have you. Uh, what this does when you combine it all together is it, over, it reduces your overall risk exposure to the market. Uh, it ensures that no single stock can wreck your portfolio. You've already divided your money in by 10. So what's the worst you could lose if a stock went to zero? It's one-tenth of your total short-term portfolio. Now, we have additional rules that I'm going to walk through in just a moment that would actually substantially reduce that potential loss for you. But understand the, the core makeup here and why you're doing this. You're starting with a small, small part of your portfolio. You're specifically targeting fast growth gains on a monthly basis or as monthly as you can get for the purposes of compounding that money monthly instead of annually. Now, I said it at the outset, and I'll repeat it. It's not day trading. That's uh, just not how we operate. Uh, these are short-term investments that are stocks or other assets that are held from one to three months and have a specific profit objective. Uh, gains are compounded, or uh, as, as often as possible, they're compounded monthly. Obviously, if you're holding an, an investment up to 90 days, uh, not every one of your buckets is going to close 
in a single 30-day period. You'll have rolling buckets closing. But what this does is you, you start, once you get started with it, uh, as you get in 30, 60, 90 days, you, that's where you start getting the turnover, the velocity rate change in the growth of your money. We target 2 to 8% returns per month. Uh, our objective is to average 5% per month because at 5%, that's how you can grow a $10,000 portfolio up to a million dollars. Now, we've been outperforming that um, every month for the last uh, 12, uh, 18 months, excuse me, uh, and I'll show you the, the chart on that a little bit later. But what this 5% uh, gives you is a targeted single year annual rate of return of 80%. And you'll discover that you can make more money faster with these goals in mind, and that you won't risk losing it all. And in part, that's because of the rules. Now, to uh, continue moving along here. The rules are based on this premise. Hope is not a strategy. Uh, and, I, and I'll explain that in a second. But in order to be successful, it doesn't matter what, what trading system or what trading program or what trading concept you're following uh, or what investing plan you're following, mine or anybody else else's, you have to have these three things. A simple, repeatable plan to come out ahead. You saw that in the last webinar. You know, the, the swing low, swing high, swing low, simple, repeatable. Well, we look for the same thing. We want the same thing in our plan. is a simple, repeatable plan to help you come out ahead. You need easy-to-follow rules that don't take a lot of time. And you need a smart way and always have a smart way to protect your money, just as every, every professional trader will always tell you about stops. Now, the, where all of this came from is to understand, and everybody knows this mantra, the reason that people lose money is always due to emotion. Now, a number of years ago, before I really dove into the investing waters, if you will, uh, I was on an air, airplane out to Las Vegas, and I was sitting next to a pretty smart guy, and we were talking about gambling, and I asked him why he thought people lost money in Las Vegas. And outside of the fact that the casinos cheat everybody, but uh, what have you, he said people lose money because they don't have triggers to quit. I have two triggers, a profit trigger and a loss trigger. Whichever one I hit first, I pull that trigger and leave the tables for the night. Well, the more I thought about it, the more, it's the same principle when you invest, isn't it? You have to have triggers. But the reality for most investors is they don't have a loss trigger. They have a hope trigger. If a stock, they buy a stock, it goes down, what do they do? They just hope it comes back. And they don't have a profit trigger, they just hope that when they buy a stock and it goes up, they just hope it keeps going higher. That's one of the recipes for disaster, and it's what wrecks investors' money. Now, the key to successful investing that we've developed is to use decision triggers to remove emotion from that equation. That's removing fear, greed, and hope. To do that, you use profit and loss triggers to establish your profit target and your risk in advance so that you can automatically secure an investment win or protect yourself from a big loss. With those triggers, your decisions wind up being made before you ever put your money into the stock market. And uh, here are, quite simply, our rules. Our rules are 20% gain, 10% stop, if you will, or 10% loss. So with that $10,000 portfolio, uh, remember your first step was to divide that capital into, by 10, into 10 in individual groups. And once you've divided that capital into 10 capital groups, each capital basket would then hold one stock. And uh, from there, the next step is to set a 20% profit trigger and a 20% loss trigger. Quite simply, the loss trigger is in place so that you don't let a small loss become a big loss. And the 20% profit trigger is in place to ensure that you take those gains when they happen so that you can use the compounding strategy that we do. So we're singles and doubles hitters. Let me just be honest with you. If you like the home run trade, go get them. Singles and doubles rack up more gains more frequently, more often than home run trades do. You also keep your losses smaller which preserves much more capital for the next trading event. So uh, I'll tell you a little later how to get your hands on the Millionaire Blueprint. Uh, for those of you who are uh, obviously uh, 
need something else, uh, I'm not going to be any uh, different than where I have been uh, in this. I'm going to go to a, through a few charts here, show you how I put all of this together, uh, and uh, thank you for listening. I appreciate it. So uh, quite simply, how do we find the right stocks to apply with our rules and our plan? Uh, we use a computer-based algorithm that ranks stocks at the end of each month. We review those stocks by sectors, including market cap and capitalization, excuse me, yeah, sectors and capitalization. And what we're looking for, quite frankly, is the one number. This is a, our technical, excuse me, this is our fundamental analysis tactic uh, that we use to find the best stocks to buy. And that one number is what we call the P.E. gap. Gaps occur, quite simply, between the P.E. ratio and the earnings growth rate. When the P.E. ratio is greater than the earnings growth rate, you have an overvalued stock. When the price to earnings ratio is less than the earnings growth rate, you have an undervalued stock. Typically, we find the wider that gap, the better the opportunity for the stock. And these gaps that we find uh, trigger 15 to 30 percent returns on our short-term investment time frames, or in short-term investment time frames, which is perfect for our set of rules. Because within those 90-day time frames, we're looking for gains up to 20 percent. So here's a quick example. This is a company called Manitowoc. A stock symbol is MTW. At the time of this particular recommendation that we were working on uh, back in December of 2013, I have a couple of fresher ones, so hang tight. We had a price to earnings ratio of 16, an earnings growth rate of 19, which gave us a negative 3 PE gap. I'll show you how to calculate this in just a minute. It's dead simple. Uh, that, but that gap, because it was because the just a minute, it's dead simple. Uh, that, but that gap, because it was because the price to earnings ratio was less than the earnings growth rate, it told us that the stock was at that time undervalued, and it gave us a buying opportunity. That's exactly what we did. Using the same rules that I just taught you, our 2010 rules, we entered the stock at the beginning of December of 2013, and within about 35 days, that stock had hit our 20% profit trigger. It's really that simple. So here are the basic rules to, to work by. I know they look reversed, but they really aren't. Uh, when the price-to-earnings gap turns, uh, the PE gap turns negative, that's a buying opportunity. Conversely, when the price-to-earnings gap is positive, that's a selling opportunity or an avoiding opportunity. So you can take it either way. Uh, you're gonna, you'll see that you can use this uh, both ways, both going long, potentially going short. Long moves, in other words, where there's a negative PE gap, they have uh, a longer life cycle, if you will. Uh, the positive PE gaps tend to have a much shorter life cycle, typically 30 to 90 days um, if you're shorting, uh, if you're going short. But the, the longer, the 20, 40, 100% possibilities, those really those uh, exist better with the, when the gap is negative. Uh, so here's a quick example of how to calculate uh, the stock, excuse me, the PE gap. Uh, the stock here that we're using is American Airlines. And you only need three numbers. This is from uh, just a quick snapshot from Yahoo Finance. You can get these numbers from pretty much any financial portal that provides earnings analysis or earnings estimates. And uh, here we're using uh, Yahoo, the analyst estimates tab. Once you enter a stock symbol is in the left-hand uh, left menu. So you scroll down, find the analyst estimates tab, click it, and that'll bring you to a screen that looks like this. You need three numbers to calculate the PE gap. The first is the current stock price. The second is the current year's earnings estimate. And the third is the next year's earnings estimate. So once you have those three numbers, and in our example here, uh, we had $51.40 for the current price, $5.72 for the current year's earnings estimates, and $8.42 for the next fiscal year's estimates. Now this is an older snapshot. Uh, it's the process that matters because it, this is, you're, you want to know how to calculate this, uh, this the PE gap. So to calculate it, quite simply, you need to do the price to earnings ratio first, which is very easy. You take the current price divided by the current year's earnings estimates. And what's different here, the way that most price to earnings ratios are expressed on financial websites is it is on, a, on what the company earned in the last 12 months. So it's TTM or tw trailing 12 months. The problem is that doesn't do you any good as an investor in identifying whether a company is rightly or incorrectly valued because Wall Street is pricing the stock several months forward based on what the company's future prospects are, not what they did in the past. 
So what we're teaching here is to use a forward price to earnings ratio. So to calculate that, you need to divide it by the current year's earnings estimates so that you know as the company's expectations forward, uh, whether or not the company is undervalued or overvalued today. So to do that here with our example, $51.40 divided by $5.72 gives us a P.E. ratio of 9. Now to make this ultra simple for you, 16 is considered fair value for most S&P 500 uh, companies. So we already know that this company is well under uh, the what would can be considered fair value on the S&P 500. But Let's continue on with getting to our actual PE gap. And here we want next we want to calculate the earnings growth rate. To do that, you divide next year's earnings by current year's earnings estimates. So in our example here, that's $8.42 divided by $5.72. That gives us a nominal number of 1.47. You have to subtract the one to get the, the percentage, and that would be 47%. So here we have a company that's trading at a multiple of nine times its price, uh, excuse me, nine times its earnings, but has an expectation of growing its earnings by almost 50%. Right away, we know just by looking at those two numbers that this is a company that has room to grow, but to do the actual calculation, we simply subtract those two numbers. We subtract the earnings growth rate of 47 there from the PE ratio of nine. In this case, with American Airlines, that would have given us a PE gap of negative 38. And that would have told us that the company is undervalued and we would want to buy the stock at current prices. So let me pull everything here together for the plan, the rules, the right stocks, everything for you all at once. Uh, this is American Airlines. This was an actual recommendation we made last year at the beginning of October. It's a stock that we actually still hold in our portfolio. And at the time uh, heading into October, we recommended the stock at the end of September to buy on the first trading day of October. That was October 1st. And the stock's price on that day was $34.50. Now, if we use the rules once we've identified this stock. The first step is to use the rules and set our or make our decisions before we commit our money to the market. And our rules, obviously, are a profit and loss trigger. So we use a 20% uh, above that entry price or $41.40. That's our profit trigger. And we have 10% below that price for our loss trigger. So that's $31.05. That's our loss trigger. Once we've done all of this little, this simple work, the only thing left to do is to let the trade run to conclusion, and that's exactly what we did. Now, uh, I know folks will notice right away the seven red bars, excuse me, six red bars right at the beginning of October. I'll remind everybody that that was uh, the Ebola scare uh, after the uh, healthcare worker in Texas took a, a commercial flight home. Uh, having been exposed to the Ebola virus, uh, took commercial flight home to Cleveland. Uh, we told them all, all of our members we were staying in American Airlines. It's exactly what we did. We continued to stay in it. And uh, so we had to ride out that short-term volatility, which was compounded by short-term volatility in the, the S&P 500 as well. Uh, but you can see within 30 days, in fact, exactly 30 days, uh, the stock moved up and hit its 20% profit trigger. Now, when we identify PE gap-based stocks, sometimes they move faster, sometimes they move slower. We have another stock I'll show you in just a few minutes, uh, which hit its target within three days. So we've had others that can go 60, 90 days and never hit that 20% target. And sometimes you have to take a smaller gain, um, or sometimes you just have to cut it loose and move on to another opportunity, uh, hopefully at a break-even or better price. Uh, but we actually moved this stock up to our medium-term portfolio, and we're holding it for 40% gains, and it hit that target in late November. We've since moved it into the long-term part of our portfolio, uh, where we're still operating at about a 50% gain, and uh, we're holding it up to about $69 per share, which would give us a 100% gain, hopefully later this year. No guarantees. So that's how that's a one example. Let's do another example. This is U.S. Silica. This was also a, this was a November 2014. I'm going to do two more November recommendations back to back to show you how all of this works together cooperatively, to, so that you still make money. Uh, current price at that time was $44.90. It was a, a, at the time it was operating with a negative 35 PE gap. We were a little nervous about entering U.S. Silica because as it, they are a provider to the fracking industry and obviously oil was under substantial pressure so we were concerned about making a trade that 
might not work in our favor. Turned out we were right. Uh, but because of the size of the gap, we were hoping for a short-term rebound in oil. Didn't happen. Here's what did happen, though. Uh, we bought the stock at the market open on uh, November 3rd. It was trading at $45.57. We set our triggers, $54.68 and 4101 Those were our profit and loss triggers for both sides of the trade. And ultimately, within two days uh, of entering the trade, the stock breached our 10% loss trigger. We told members to exit the next day. We took about an 8%, 8.5% loss. Um, so it's going to happen. And the key here, though, and the reason that the triggers worked is if you could have held on for a little bit longer, stock obviously made a retrace, went all the way back up, broke out of its, uh, uh, broke above its original entry point. But then within just a couple of days, you see it go right off the shelf and all the way down into the low 20s. Uh, so by executing on that stop, on that loss trigger, we saved ourselves a big loss. Uh, you, there's no system that's infallible. No, you know we've 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 uh, run anywhere from 90 uh, up to a maximum of 90% winners in a single month. Uh, that means nine out of 10, because uh, that's what we do. We do 10 stocks per month, and uh, the worst we've done is four, four winners out of 10. So, and then you'll see even with these rules, uh, it's not that it, you don't have to win every trade. It's one of the advantages to having the 2010 rules working in your favor along with the capital division. In fact, in the same month, this is Meritor, stock symbol MTOR. Uh, they're a, an automotive supplier. And uh, at the time that we recommended them, they had a negative 20 PE gap. So again, we wanted to jump on this stock at uh, the same time that we we're buying into US Silica. And the price at that time on November 3rd, first trading day of the month was $11.55. Again, we set our triggers. 20% above, $13.86, and 10% below, $10.40. And uh, within just a few days, I told you sometimes these can actually move a little bit faster. And then here it is, and, uh, within five days, uh, six, seven days, sorry, seven days of uh, the actual entry, we had uh, reached our 20% target. We did continue on holding on, and uh, that stock got as high as about a 32% gain. So... Uh, that's uh, that's uh, as simple as it gets. Now, of course, of course, across those two trades, uh, I mean, this is just an example again. Across the two trades, you had a trade that lost eight and a half percent, and a, gain, a trade that gained twenty percent. So, when you put all of that together, based on a ten thousand dollar portfolio, just in two of those buckets, you were already up one and a half percent, one point one five percent. $115 on your $10,000, even though you had a stock that lost 8.5%. So we're operating on two to one risk to reward. This is the entire approach is predicated on money management and risk management and portfolio management principles. They work cooperatively so that you come out ahead. You don't have to win every trade. If there's a bad month, they're going to happen. If there's a bad month, you mitigate your losses. You preserve the maximum amount of capital for the next trading event or the next trading month, and you're able to move on. So I'll take a quick look at a full run of our plan in action and uh, try to get everybody out of here in the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes at the most. Uh, but here's an example of a full run. This was February of this year. Uh, these were the 10 stocks that we had recommended. Uh, you could see the PE gaps were anywhere from a negative 10, uh, should be a negative 10 there, sorry, up to a negative 260. But you can also see the quality names. Uh, these are not penny stocks. These are not OTCs or pink sheets or crap, uh, garbage stocks, if you will. Uh, you have uh, USG, Home Builder, uh, Whirlpool, U United Airlines. Uh, we came back for more on US Silica and actually did better this time. Uh, Bank of America. So we're working with good companies, good names. Uh, and the, that's the key behind uh, what we do. So here's how everything works out. Again, plan, rules, all the money, everything together. Uh, if you had started with $10,000 at the beginning of February, you would have had a total portfolio value of about $9,648. That's essentially accounting for an entry commission on every one of these trades. You would have bought all 10 stocks at the beginning of the month. That's about the, the amount of money you would have had running, if you will. You would have had excess cash and obviously would have paid commissions. By the end of the month, 
these were the returns. Uh, this is how rapidly some of these can move for you. Cons, I told you earlier uh, that cons was a, a trade that uh, we were holding right at the beginning of February, and I think it was the second day, third day that we were holding it, the stock actually gapped up over our 20% target. We exited the next day, wound up exiting with about a 29.5% gain. Uh, so it can happen that rapidly, just like Meritor. Uh, we also had a loser, Bungie. We closed that one out at 10.9%. So it breached our loss trigger. We closed it the next day. Uh, you can see some middle, middling returns here, 1% on United Airlines, uh, 3 and 5% for the, for the month on a couple of other stocks, Whirlpool up 14%. Uh, U.S. Silica, we came back and then we actually got 11.5% out of that one. So we made back some of our money from the 8.5% loss that we took in November. We got it right that time. Uh, so, so that's how, when you when you put all of that together, by the end of the month, when you when you close the month out, this is an unrealized gain, so please understand that. You had an unrealized gain of 9.9%, 9 percent, uh, and that would have included at least three trade closures here in U.S. Silica, actually four, I'm sorry, four of those trades would actually have been closed, uh, So, you, but it's a 9% gain within 30 days. So this is how rapidly this can work for you, and this is why we we're, tar we're targeting that 5% per month. And over the last 18 months, uh, we continue to do very well. Uh, January seems to be a really bad month for us. Uh, both uh, January last year, January this year, uh, markets obviously being down in the second half of our, or parts of the, the month. Uh, we've we've kept our returns small. We've kept our losses small there, at less than 2% which was far better than the S&P 500 did in each of those months. But uh, the consistency of generating a return each month, that's how you start that compounding process. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, I'll take a stop there and uh, try and give you, a, uh, everyone, a little bit of uh, questions here. Um, so let me uh, back, uh, give me just a second to scroll back, and I'll, I'll just try and pick a few of these questions here. Uh, Cedric, did you not get stopped out? Blah, blah, blah. No, uh, the, again, we do not um, We do not use stop losses in our program. We use the loss trigger as a decision point. When it gets, when a stock goes down to 10%, we have to make a decision whether something fundamental has changed about that company, which would then give us a reason to close that trade. Um, in some cases, things you will find that we will tell people to continue holding. That was one of those cases, that American Airlines trade was one of those cases. We actually we were holding Delta Airlines at the same time. So on both of those trades, we told people, first and foremost, this is program trading. It was based on negative news. That negative news all had to do with the, the Ebola scare. Uh, and if you consider the, in the time frame of October, as it relates to the airline stocks, um, oil is just beginning its it was it's continuing its significant slide, and as oil goes down, what happens to airline profits? They go up. So the fundamental story for airlines is actually brighter. Uh, the S and P 500 is pulling was pulling back at the same time. We had that V shape uh, V shaped charts at at the time. So when we're what we were looking at was quite frankly, there's no fundamental reason to close this trade. Uh, the the airline industry is not going to roll over and die, and it didn't. So there have been other instances where, like with U.S. Silica, we'll say there is something fundamental. The oil trend continued down into early November. We had to close that trade. That's how we operate and manage that for all of our members. So um, let me uh, see what else I can find in here, uh, a couple of other... Uh, how do you find those stocks? Uh, in our program, uh, we do this uh, through a so much, computer -based program. Very fascinating uh, presentation. First, it ranks stocks so, for us. All right, us. everyone. So I just want to also let you know, uh, those stocks. invite you to our cyber group chat room, which you can find on our website. One second. Uh, uh, Greg, would you mind just typing in the cyber group link? Here we go. One second.
Sorry about that, everyone. Jesse Colombo here. I'm back. My uh, browser just crashed. So I just wanted to introduce you to our cyber group trial. We're actually offering it for $29 for five days. And it's a daily chat room where we're trading stocks throughout the day successfully. We're trading high momentum stocks. And we have many different moderators who are professional traders, including Rich Lethis, very successful trader, and also Fausto's in there all day long as well as myself, Jesse Colombo, Cyber Trading University's Forex and Futures Instructor. And I do a daily update at 4 p.m. Eastern every day where I discuss the overall financial markets, including swing trading ideas and uh, updates on the futures market, Forex market, as well as different stocks. So, And then also for full Cyber Group members, I do a weekly, uh, a weekly workshop where I teach different trading or technical analysis techniques and as Mark said European markets pretty much all different markets showing the uh, daily analysis of it and many people find it very useful so that's just $29 for a five-day trial it's definitely worth it so you can see how many of our members are actually making legitimate money all day long from this type of day trading so it's just it's just fascinating what we do is we look at some of the biggest moving stocks for the day and then basically look for entry and exit opportunities using the system that Fausto discussed in his uh, presentation a few hours ago. So just come on in, very low, you know, no risk, and you'll be able to see actually how well it really does work and see it for, your, you know, for yourself. You, we have a lot of students who just basically have quit their jobs and have become full-time traders just by following this system. So it's definitely well worth it to be able to see with your own eyes. Don't take our word our word for it. So click on that link, and uh, there we go. That's the link. And we have many different features. Uh, we have also have Rich Lepis, one of the moderators, professional trader, does a weekly traders talk every Wednesday, where he discusses he clarifies techniques on how to actually day trade stocks similar to how Fausto does and so many of the students find it fascinating they're all recorded so you have access to the archives of those recordings of traders talks traders talk as well as my my uh, weekly workshops on different topics so I teach different topics everything from candlestick analysis I did that a few weeks ago one workshop and then I'm going to be doing advanced candlestick analysis probably next week I was teaching how to use volatility to spot big upcoming market moves and then yesterday I did a workshop on intermarket analysis or basically when you use one financial market to predict another and I was just showing how to use different Forex markets to predict moves and futures and vice versa and that's also useful for trading various stock sectors especially commodity stock sectors like oil stocks copper agricultural related stocks so we have a lot of different trading styles that we cover in our cyber group trading room so check it out all right folks thank, thank you so much for attending and we hope to work with you in the future have a wonderful weekend take care